It's hard to believe, but William Holden has been dead now for almost four decades. He was one of the finest actors of his time. He first came onto the scene with his 1939 hit film, Golden Boy. After that, he starred in a screen adaptation of Our Town that further established him as one of Hollywood's leading men. By the early to mid-50s, he was starring in one hit film after another, such as Sunset Boulevard, The Country Girl, and Picnic. And who could forget the epic period piece The Bridge on the River Kwai in 1957? Despite his far-reaching fame and the fact he won an Academy Award in 1954, William Holden's life was full of struggle and hardship. One of the biggest hurdles he faced was his lifelong, very public battle with drinking and alcoholism. It seemed his one weakness was always the bottle. Once he took that first sip, it was off to the races, and eventually this affliction started to take a toll on his personal and professional life. Holden's problematic drinking started negatively affecting his chiseled good looks in the 60s. Although he was relatively young by Hollywood standards, he was considered an old-school actor and started losing roles to younger up-and-coming actors like Paul Newman and Steve McQueen. In turn, this led to Holden feeling compelled to drink more and more. He did continue to star in a few good films like The Wild Bunch in 1969, Towering Inferno in 1974, and S.O.B. in 81, although by that time he no longer had the youthful veneer of a handsome young leading man like he used to. The years of heavy drinking had seriously taken a toll on his physical appearance, not to mention his physical and mental well-being. After drinking like a fish for decades, Holden found himself pretty much washed up. He called Santa Monica his home in 1981. He was part owner of the Shorecliffe Towers high-rise apartment building on Ocean Avenue. He lived on the building's fourth floor in unit number 43. He was well known for being very private. Even his neighbors reported only ever receiving the occasional head nod from the elusive actor. He was also notorious for having the bad habit of dropping off the face of the earth from time to time. His disappearing acts became more frequent towards the end of his life, and he hardly would ever give anyone notice before vanishing weeks at a time. That's actually why it took so long for anyone to find him. According to the autopsy report, Holden was already dead for a week before his body was discovered. It's been shown he spoke to his girlfriend, Stephanie Powers, seven days before he likely passed away. She reported he was drinking at the time he called, but beyond that, he seemed like his normal self. On Monday, November 16, 1981, the apartment building's manager, Bill Martin, decided to investigate Holden's absence and let himself into his apartment via a passkey. Mr. Martin told the police that when he entered the apartment, all the lights were off, except for the TV set still blaring. He used a flashlight to navigate the apartment. Holden's corpse was found in a robe and shirt laying on the floor. The robe was folded back in a way that made it seem Holden was attempting to dress himself while he either lost consciousness or tripped and ultimately passed away after sustaining major head trauma. Further examination revealed a deep gash on his forehead, approximately three inches in length. Holden's doctor arrived on the scene and speculated he might have started vomiting up blood and potentially lacerated the lower portion of his esophagus. At the scene, investigators recovered a large empty bottle of vodka in his trash can, as well as four beer bottles and a mostly full bottle of vodka on his kitchen counter. There was also a large amount of blood surrounding his body and soaked into his bedding and sheets. Judging from the condition of his body, investigators estimated he'd been dead for approximately four days before being found. According to a report put out by the chief medical examiner, Holden appeared to have tripped on a throw rug before hitting his head sharply on the nightstand. He slammed into the piece of furniture with such force, it was jammed about three to four inches into the plaster wall. Holden likely didn't realize the extent of his injury and apparently tried to stop the bleeding on his own. Eight blood-soaked tissues were found next to his body, and so was a working telephone which he could have used to call for medical help. But instead, he likely died of blood loss within about 15 minutes of his accident. Holden was only 63 years old when he passed away. But let's take a moment to celebrate his life. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. And stick around for more about William Holden's career. William Holden's Early Life and Career on April 17, 1918, William Franklin Beadle Jr. of O'Fallon, Illinois came into the world. He was the eldest child of three. His father, William Franklin Beadle Sr., was an industrial chemist and his mother, Mary Blanche Ball, an educator. The Beadle family moved to Pasadena, California when William was three. Holden was of English descent, and his paternal great-grandmother, Rebecca Westfield, who was born in England in 1817, was one of his first ancestors to immigrate to America. Some of his mother's ancestors found their way to the States in the 17th century, and they all hailed from Millenbach, Lancaster, England. 
While in high school and junior college, Holden immersed himself in sports. He thought he could somehow prove himself to his demanding father through athletic achievement. While studying chemistry at Pasadena Junior College, he got involved in local radio programs and earned himself roles in several productions put on by the Pasadena Playhouse. He was discovered by a Paramount Pictures talent scout in 1937. As a young buck actor who was easy on the eyes but not quite refined yet as a performer, Holden landed small parts in films like Prison Farm and Million Dollar Legs. He was then chosen out of 65 candidates to play Joe Bonaparte in the Columbia Pictures production of Golden Boy, which proved to be the film that landed him on the map. Hollywood Shining Golden Boy it's not particularly common for a Hollywood star to be made overnight, but William Holden beat all the odds by achieving his instant stardom with his first leading role. The part that established him as a powerhouse was the wholesome young prize fighter who just wants to be a violinist in Golden Boy. Even though he clearly had talent, his lack of experience made shooting difficult, and after just two weeks, Columbia's president Harry Cohn had half the mind to fire him. But his co-star, Barbara Stanwyck, who had a great deal of respect for Holden, convinced the executive to rethink his decision. Holden's performance in that film was received with almost unanimous acclaim, and he was forever in Stanwyck's debt for believing in him enough to pull him through that picture. After Columbia Pictures signed him to a contract, he was suddenly one of the most in-demand, polished, leading men in Tinsley. Town. His early films didn't necessarily take full advantage of his talents, but he amassed a sizable fan following nonetheless. One of his early feats after Golden Boy was Our Town in 1940, followed by hit features like I Wanted Wings, The Remarkable Andrew, The Fleets Inn and Meet the Stewarts, and Young and Willing. During World War II, Holden served in the Army Air Corps, reacted in training films, and was promoted to lieutenant. After the war, he returned to the screen in 1947, first with a cameo appearance in the film Variety Girl, then in a leading role in Blaze of Noon. He rounded out the remainder of the 40s, starring in films like Streets of Laredo, Miss Grant Takes Richmond, and Dear Wife. In 1950, he played Gigolo Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard, and then a tutor in Born Yesterday. He followed these up by playing a cynical military sergeant in the Oscar-winning 1953 film Stalag 17. He remained popular in the 50s, appearing in films like Picnic and The Bridge on the River Kwai. The latter proved to be one of his most financially lucrative film roles, making him an instant multi-millionaire. He invested much of his earnings from that film into various business ventures, including a radio station in Hong Kong. By the end of the decade, Holden had relocated to Geneva, Switzerland, but spent the majority of his free time traveling. In the 60s, he founded the exclusive Mount Kenya Safari Club with his oil tycoon billionaire friend Ray Ryan and Swiss financier Carl Hirschman. Around this time, Holden's films dropped substantially in quality, as he spent more of his free time focused on his hobbies and business dealings. And by the 60s, Holden's drinking had already started to detrimentally affect his physical appearance. His face was so heavily lined in 1969 when he appeared in The Wild Bunch, one critic likened it to a map of the U.S. His last two commercial hits, Towering Inferno and Network, pretty much wrapped up his decades-long career. Following his passing, Stephanie Powers, his girlfriend at the time, helped set up the William Holden Wildlife Foundation and Educational Center in Kenya. He also earned himself a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now it's time to hear from you. Let us know in the comments section which one of his films you appreciate the most between The Towering Inferno and Sunset Boulevard. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.